Hello, I'm Peter Carter, and this is the longest video I have made for the Climate Emergency Institute. It's 45 minutes long. The topic is the criminalization of peaceful climate change protest. And what I explain here is the situation which we are in is the future destroying fossil fuel enforcement. Fossil fuels are being forced on us, forced on the future, by the governments and the fossil fuel industry. The video is fairly long because what I'm giving here is the defense, all of the overwhelming evidence for the defense of peaceful climate change protest, which the courts have made inadmissible. So I present this in some detail. The prime recently publicized example, which motivated me to get down to doing this, is the recent Just Stop Oil guilty finding by the court and harsh sentences. So I'm hoping that everybody who's interested in climate change will be able to take the time to listen to this. It's basically a podcast uh, composed of quotes from the various climate change and science documents. And I'm hoping that it will be useful for the young, mainly climate change protesters that are out there protesting the destruction of their future. What I'm going to address is the criminalization of peaceful climate change protest. And in particular, also, the situation that climate change does not count in court. It's inadmissible. I found there is much to discover from the recent Just Stop Oil UK protesters' guilty verdict and sentencing. With respect to climate change protest and the treatment of the protesters in general, Roger Hallam and four other climate change protesters on the 18th of July 2022 were found guilty of conspiracy to cause a public nuisance for planning direct action protests on the UK motorway M25 that occurred over several days in November of 2022. Uh, please check and uh, try and remember that date, November 2022. The evidence on this case was a Zoom call. The evidence on this case was a Zoom call. The sentences were four and five years in jail the longest in the UK for nonviolent protest. During the trial, the prosecution read out facts not in dispute on climate change. And this included that the climate crisis is an existential threat to humanity and global heating of more than 1.5 degrees C above pre-industrial levels would be catastrophic. The 2018 1.5 degree C IPCC Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Special Report advised that the 1.5 degree C limit required global emissions to decline from 2020 and to be about halved by 2030. And this was confirmed by the 2021 sixth assessment of the IPCC, the AR6. With the recent June 2024 record warming of 1.5 degrees C for June, there have been 12 consecutive months of 1.5 degrees C. The 2021 IPC6 assessment, and I bring your attention to the date of that, 2021, projected that failing global emergency action an irreversible 1.5 degrees C would be reached in the early 2030s. With respect to global warming, the 2020 global temperature increases 1.3 degrees C, with warming increasing at an accelerating rate, three times faster since 1980 than before. That's the USNOAA. There's the uh, graph, warming from 1800, global warming from 1800, up to the recent record 2023, 
and 2020 was 1.3 degrees C. And there you can clearly see that the trend line there is accelerating. I found that a government spokesman in uh, response to the protest and the action stated as follows, we will not bend to the will of activists who naively want to extinguish North Sea oil and gas production. Doing so would put energy security and British jobs at risk and simply increase foreign imports while not reducing demand. We are committed to a strong North Sea industry as we transition away from expensive fossil fuels over the coming decades. It's quite an extraordinary statement because it supports the contention of the protesters. We're in a climate emergency. The world does not have decades to transition away from fossil fuels. Climate change has been widely recognized as the global emergency since at least 2020. And the IPCC sixth assessment has said global emissions have to decline rapidly on an immediate basis. The United Nations Climate Change Convention was signed in 1992, by which governments agreed to control their greenhouse gas emissions to prevent dangerous climate change. Global carbon dioxide emissions have increased 60% since then, which is far beyond extremely dangerous, as attested to by disastrous extreme weather events caused by global warming and are increasing and will continue to increase, according to the IPCC. The science report of the IPCC sixth assessment was published August 2021. It stated climate change was widespread, rapid, and intensifying, that many of the changes observed in the climate are unprecedented in thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years. And some of the changes already set in motion, such as continued sea level rise, are irreversible over hundreds to thousands of years. It went on, unless there are immediate, rapid, and large-scale reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, limiting warming to close to 1.5 degrees C, or even 2 degrees C, will be beyond reach. Climate Action Tracker, which is managed by climate experts, last reported on the UK climate policies in September of 2023. The report was scathing, as the UK policies being insufficient for contributing to global emissions and reductions in line with the 2015 UN Paris Agreement. The assessment noted that the government was wrecking the UK long-held climate leadership, making a series of U-turns on key climate policies demonstrating chronic delays and a lack of vision in developing new policies and actively undermining investor confidence in the country's commitment to climate action. The crime that the court found these few non-violent climate change protesters were guilty of is, quote, the offense of conspiracy intentionally to cause a public nuisance contrary to Section 78.1 of the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Act of 2022. I found that this new extraordinary UK legislation provides for a crime committed causing, quote, serious harm, which was defined as ranging from causing death to serious distress, annoyance, serious inconvenience or loss of amenity. Conviction can lead to imprisonment for up to 10 years. The original legislation was in fact changed. The UK government since removed the defense of proportionality, which was in the legislation. I presume that's the necessity defense. 
and remove defense of lawful excuse. They were removed from the original legislation. This means that climate change activists can no longer explain their motives to a jury. The judge in this case told the jury that the issue of climate breakdown was, quote, entirely irrelevant to the question of whether or not each is guilty or not guilty. The judge noted, quote, I could fairly observe there is a general consensus in both scientific and societal and societal terms that man-made climate change exists and that action is required to mitigate its, its effects. Even so, the judge did not allow the jury to consider climate change as a motivation for protest. They were subsequently found guilty by the jury and sentenced between four or five months in jail by the presiding judge. The conspiracy evidence of the plan to block highways came from an audio and Zoom call on November the 2nd, 2022. The Zoom call planning the disruption of the highways. And uh, it came, it, and the evidence was provided by an Irish Sun journalist who had infiltrated a meeting of the group. So, Just Stop Oil. According to Time magazine, Just Stop Oil describes itself as a non violent civil resistance group demanding the UK government stop licensing all new oil, gas, and coal projects. The group's aims include the UK government switching subsidies from oil and gas industries towards clean energy, public transportation and insulation to reduce energy consumption. The group calls on the government to transition to sustainable energy by creating millions of proper skilled jobs and protecting the rights of workers in the sunset industries. The group says that human-induced climate change will destroy human civilization unless emergency action is taken on fossil fuel emissions. Is climate change that big a threat? Well, yes, as the prosecution at the trial presented as facts not in dispute. Climate change is an existential threat to humanity, that's our survival, and global heating of more than 1.5 degrees C above pre-industrial would be catastrophic. On the 6th of October 2021, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences published a paper entitled Climate Change and the Threat to Civilization. Just take heat waves alone. Heat waves are increasing in all countries and people are increasingly dying from them. They will keep increasing in frequency, intensity, and duration so long as today's emissions continue, as will the increase in forest fires and drought. There is no legal or internationally agreed limit on emissions, so there is no limit to the fossil fuel death and destruction apart from the collapse of civilization. The protesters, indeed, were different, are different. They're not afraid to tell and bring attention to this terrible truth, to the unspeakable truth. Today's terrible truth. The 21st of July, 2024, was the highest daily temperature on Earth in 125,000 years at 17.09 degrees C. Today's report of the global temperature is that the 22nd of July, 2024, is a much higher record temperature at 17.15 degrees C. So we've had two or three days of record high temperatures in the past 125,000 years. Uh, This all scientists are agreed on, by the way.
the 125,000 years, that is. The global temperature is staying above 1.5 degrees C, and it's above the huge 2023 record high temperature. The first half of 2024 has surpassed this huge record temperature of 2023, a temperature which was so high it baffled scientists. Temperature records have been broken for many weeks worldwide. A historic enormous heat dome has had 245 million Americans on heat alert facing 90 degree temperatures. The situation has affected the U.S. expanding since May 2024. It is a historic, prolonged, coast-to-coast -coast U.S. heat wave. This heat has now traveled up to Canada and reached to the Northwest Territories, as you can see from this temperature map. Canada's northern forests are burning again, and that's even more CO2 emissions. Mexico suffered a record prolonged heat wave starting in March 2024. Monkeys fell out of their trees, dying from the heat. India was impacted with its longest record breaking heat wave since mid May. Temperatures soared over 45 degrees. Birds fell from the sky in the heat of northern India. Pakistan was similarly affected. Pakistan and northern India are still under record heat. The map there is a very helpful uh, map produced on a daily basis by the New York Times. And this is the 22nd of July, and it shows the regions of extremely high temperatures just about everywhere. June of 2024, global warming was a record 1.5 degrees C while the Northern Hemisphere was a record at 1.81 degrees C, and both are increasing at accelerating rates. Since the 2018 1.5 degrees C special report, 1.5 C has been the universally agreed globally disastrous danger limit, with 2 degrees C being globally catastrophic and a point of no return planetary catastrophe. Now at 1.5 degrees C, increasing extreme events are having disastrous and costly impacts even on the most developed countries. Under current policies, the total cost of climate change damages to the UK, the climate change costs are projected to increase from 1.1% today of the GDP, that's $30 billion, to 3.3 percent by 2050, 100 billion dollars. That's from a May 2022 policy brief of University College London. World government policies, or their absence, makes for a world-ending warming of double today's at 3.2 degrees C from the IPCC. In 2018, Climate Action Tracker, managed by climate experts, put government policies at 3.3 degrees C this century. So I'm pointing out this was known back in 2018. Even if governments applied strong mitigation today, and there's no prospect of that, global temperature would only respond after 20 to 30 years. That's from the 6th IPCC assessment. Much higher warming and far worse dis extremes are certain. A great many people will die. Approximately 3.3 to 3.6 billion people live in contexts that are highly vulnerable to climate change, the IPCC. That's over 3 billion lives on the line. But at 2 degrees C, world food production from all major food producing regions are projected to be in decline and all life is on the line, subsequent to the 2 degrees C increase. Global health and civilization depend totally on agriculture. 
there are multiple adverse effects of climate change on agricultural crops. It was established long ago that at 3 degrees C, agricultural crop yields would be in an irreversible decline for all major crops in all major food producing regions. The IPC6 assessment found that the impact of climate change on crops is generally negative, which applied to cereals and other food crops. Negative effect on yields increase with every increment of warming, as do extreme weather events. At 2 degrees C, in the 6th assessment, all cereal crop yields are projected to be in decline. The 6th assessment reported on food security effects in 2022. Climate change impacts are negatively affecting agriculture, fisheries, and aquaculture, increasingly hindering efforts to meet human needs. Human-induced global warming has slowed growth of agricultural productivity over the past 50 years. The excellent record steady increase in world agricultural productivity has been clawed back by the increasing effects of climate change past decades. Uh, the IPCC goes on, the quote is, warming is negatively affecting crop quality and harvest stability. Ocean acidification and warming have already affected farmed aquatic species. So I'm putting these little references in just after the uh, quotes. The deadly fossil fuel pollution is not limited to climate change. It's been known for a hundred years and more that fossil fuel combustion causes health damaging and deadly air pollution. Fossil fuel specific air pollution has now been found to cause 10 million premature deaths a year. That's from this 2021 study. 10 million deaths a year from the fossil fuel industry. Just stop oil protesters. They are not in denial of the unthinkable. That's clear from their Zoom discussion of November 2022. The climate change evidence justifying the attention getting protest is well known, but the UK court disallowed the accused presenting any climate change evidence. It's been similar in Canada. Worldwide, the courts have generally ignored climate change as a defense and handed out unusually harsh punishments to climate protesters. There was overwhelming evidence of increasing global climate change destruction by the time of the November 2022 Zoom call. The World Meteorological Organization issues an annual State of the Climate report. Turning to the 2022 report on the climate in 2021, this was issued on the 18th of May 2022. The report found that four key climate change indicators, greenhouse gas concentrations, sea level rise, ocean heat, and ocean acidification set new records in 2021. Extreme weather, the day-to-day -day face of climate change, led to hundreds of billions of dollars in economic losses and wrecked a heavy toll on human lives and well-being and triggered shocks for food and water security and displacement that have accentuated that have accentuated in 2022 so yes i am providing the evidence that the protesters could have presented at trial but not allowed to in this wmo report the secretary general stated our climate is changing before our eyes the heat trapped by human-induced greenhouse gases will warm the planet for many generations to come. Sea level rise, ocean heat, and acidification will continue for hundreds of years. Some glaciers have reached the point of no return, and this will have long-term repercussions in a world in which more than 2 billion people already experience water stress. 
That's because of the dependence of the spring melt of the glaciers. Further from the WML report, exceptional heat waves broke records across Western North America and the Mediterranean. Death Valley, California, reached 54.4 degrees C on the 9th of July, 22, equaling a similar 2020 value as the highest recorded in the world since at least the 1930s. And Syracuse in Sicily reached 48.8 degrees C. The Canadian province of British Columbia reached 49.6 degrees C on the 29th of June. And this continued to more than 500 reported heat-related deaths and fueled devastating wildfires, which in turn worsened the impacts of flooding in November. The WMO reported that greenhouse gas concentrations had reached a new global high in 2020. When the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration reached 413 parts per million, which is 149% of the pre-industrial value. CO2 had increased 50%. Continued to increase in 2021 and early 2022 and have increased faster ever since. CO2 emissions cause most of the global heating and all of the acidification of the ocean. The 2022 WMO report said that the IPCC had concluded that ocean open surface pH is now the lowest. That puts acidification at the highest. It has been for at least 26,000 years. And current rates of pH change, ocean acidification, are unprecedented. Global mean sea level reached a new record high in 2021. After increasing at an average 4.5 millimeters per year over the period 2013 to 2021, and this is more than double the rate between 1993 and 2022, and now, or, and now, and over that period is mainly due to the accelerated loss of ice mass from the ice sheets, Greenland and Antarctica. This has major implications for hundreds of millions of coastal dwellers and increases the vulnerability to tropical cyclones or hurricanes in the West. Coral reefs are especially vulnerable to climate change. We're still on the report. They are projected to lose between 70 and 90% of their former coverage area at 1.5 degrees C of warming and over 99% at 2 degrees C. So my comment comes in here. The Australia's Great Barrier Reef has been hit by widespread coral breaching caused by heat stress which was confirmed by the Australian agencies March 2024. This is the fifth mass bleaching of the reef since 2016 and the very worst, the most widespread, affecting the entire reef 1,422 miles long and 133,000 square miles and the most severe bleach the fourth mass bleach of March 2022 affected 90% of the reef. Back to the WMO report of May 2022. Flooding induced economic losses of 17.7 US billion dollars occurred in Henan province of China and Western Europe experienced some of its most severe flooding on record in mid-July, associated with economic losses in Germany exceeding 20 billion US dollars. There was heavy loss of life. Drought affected many parts of the world, including the Horn of Africa, Canada, the Western United States, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Turkey. 
In subtropical South America, drought caused big agricultural losses. So my comment, this is all overwhelming evidence that the court said could not be considered. A scientific paper published on the 9th of September 2022 found that exceeding 1.5 degrees C global warming could trigger multiple planetary impacts, catastrophic climate change tipping points. The world is on a fast track to trigger multiple large planetary irreversible amplifying feedbacks and tipping point thresholds at 2 degrees C which would further accelerate global heating and in time make this amazing life-supporting Earth a hostile, hothouse Earth, unlivable planet. There's also the deadly harm to other species and world ecosystems that are being ignored. The sixth mass extinction of species is accelerating. Life is dying out fast, even the insects the much-publicized insect apocalypse has doubled the number of at-risk species to two million. There are today two million species at risk of extinction. All climate change emission scenarios increase the extinction rate further. This was established in the 2014 fifth IPCC assessment. Fossil fuels are used to manufacture toxic pesticides and plastics. These toxins and microplastics are everywhere and in everyone. Governments are ignoring the science. All of this science that demands immediate mitigation measures to put emissions into rapid decline. This is imperative, essential, most particularly, and most obviously for today's children. The quote from the sixth assessment, global greenhouse gas emissions are to peak between 2020 and at the latest before 2025. The science of immediate mitigation is not new. In fact, the 2013 IPCC's the science part of the fifth assessment, the best case scenario in that assessment called RCP 2.6 was the only sub two degree C scenario and it required a 2020 global emissions decline. UNEP, United Nations Environment Program projected back in 2012 that global emissions decline by 2020 for a two degree C limit and subsequent to 2012, more recently, this is an annual report for the 1.5 degree C limit. And there you see uh, extract an image from the 2012 UNEP emissions gap report. The quote is emissions scenarios analyzed in this report and consistent with a likely chance of meeting the two degree C target have to peak before 2020 and have emissions levels in 2020 of about 44 gigatons of greenhouse gases. That's what CO2E equivalent means. The fact is 2022 greenhouse gas emissions were way higher at 53.8 billion tons. Global greenhouse gas emissions increased 1.7% in 2022 to reach a record high of the 53.8 billion metric tons global emissions. Therefore, clearly, are far above a 2 degree C limit and the emissions had to be in the decline by 2020. In fact, Starting with the 2019 Madrid UN COP25, that's the climate conference, the IPCC chairs in Madrid, it was uh, Hussein Li, have stated emissions must decline on an immediate basis. His quote in 2019, let me start by reminding you 
that our assessment implies that greenhouse gas emissions must start to peak from next year, 2020. This was repeated for 1.5 degrees C and 2 degrees C at every UN climate conference since by the chair of the IPCC. It has not been repeated by policymakers nor by the scientists. The 2014 IPCC fifth assessment for 2 degrees C as well as the sixth assessment of 2022, I repeat, called calls for immediate emissions decline. Um, this image here is the uh, CO2 emissions. It's from the International Energy Agency. Uh, you could call it the overwhelming evidence for the defense of protesters. 2022 CO2 emissions reached an all-time high of 36.8 billion tons. That's the March 2023 IEA report. And it's from CO2 emissions in 2022. The emissions being from energy combustion and industrial processes. So here we are in 1900, here we are in 1960, the global emissions of CO2 from fossil fuel burning increase on a steady accelerating rate. The little nick there is the COVID emissions decline, and it was just as rapidly increased by the governments uh, doling out huge sums of money to the fossil fuel industry for their economic recovery, not huge sums to the, renew to the renewable energy industry. Although everyone, all organizations, urge them to do this. All legal claims on governments by youth, the youth in many countries over many years have brought court cases against their governments for protective emissions cuts. They have been immediately fought in court by their governments and they have been denied in all but a couple of cases. With only a couple of exceptions, peaceful climate change protesters are preemptively ordered, not to mention climate change at trial by the court. Today, CO2 emissions are higher than ever and still being increased. The latest is the 2024 Statistical Review statistical review of world energy, energy emissions have reached 40 billion tons of CO2 for the first time, and this was a big 2% increase. The science is that atmospheric CO2 has been increasing at an accelerating, unprecedented rate since measuring started in 1958 and atmospheric CO2 now is at a 14 million year high. Today's level is 424.4, that's the adjusted mean, and that is a 52% increase since fossil fuel industrialization. Over the past two years, atmospheric CO2 increase was the highest ever. This was a special report by the NOAA and the rate continues to be the highest to this day. Today, global atmospheric CO2 and the global temperature increase are tracking the very worst case scenario. At least 2.4 degrees C is locked in, in the pipe. That's in the pipe global warming by today's record high atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations and the consequent radiative heat forcing. This comes from James Hansen and uh, many colleagues, a team published in November of 2023. But this doubling in the pipe of global warming at any particular time was projected many years ago. 
for example, as far back as 2011 by the National Research Council on stabilization, on climate stabilization targets. Uh, as you can see, I've been following this science for a long time. Two degrees C was recognized as a point of no return many years ago by the EU, by their two degrees C limit. And it was recognized at that time that 2 degrees C does not stop at 2 C. It inevitably continues to increase. And research today supports this. That's because of amplifying feedbacks. All amplifying feedback tipping points are triggered at 2 degrees C. That's from a 2018 paper called The Trajectory of the Anthropocene. Global warming in June of 2024 was 1.5 degrees C, making a 12-month stretch of over 1.5 degrees C monthly increases. A 12-month stretch of consecutive monthly records and over 1.5 degrees C. All global warming drivers, we've already heard about atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations and about emissions, are increasing as fast and some faster than ever. This was in the WMO March 2024 report. The fact is emissions are far above a 2 degree C limit. Our governments then, that are supposed to protect citizens, are pushing more fossil fuel extraction, giving higher fossil fuel subsidies. The Guardian reported on the 19th of May 2022 that the UK had approved several fossil fuel projects since the 2021 Glasgow UN COP 2026. The Guardian found that about 50 schemes were in the pipeline between now, 2022, and 2025, despite these climate pledges. The fossil fuel industry record of deception, fraud, lobbying, sabotaging of climate change mitigation is a matter of record. Still have reports coming out, and this goes back many decades and is still going on today. It is the evilest crime of all time. Just Stop Oil protesters were found guilty of a conspiracy to commit mischief. In effect, there is a fossil fuel corporation and government monumental criminal conspiracy to keep extracting more and burning more fossil fuels, all the while ignoring increasing disastrous and catastrophic impacts that are certain to continue increasing faster. Nothing is being done to prevent this. Mitigation is not happening because the big fossil fuel and banking corporations control the economy and have a stranglehold on governments. And governments do not have the integrity to stand up to the corporations. The opposite. The laws are being used to prosecute and criminalize the few peaceful climate change protesters. In most cases, the courts have prohibited any mention of climate change, in effect prohibiting any defense. This is not how peaceful protesters have been and are treated. Certainly, the history, certainly from the history in the UK, this is special, harsh treatment for climate change protesters. The necessity defense for protest in the UK has a long history of success, but not now for climate change. The world's children, future generations of humanity and of other species have no defense against increasingly disastrous, destructive, deadly fossil fuel climate change impacts. 
those few protesters bringing attention to the situation of accelerating global climate change and impacts have been shut down by their governments by the use of legislation by the courts, which leaves no defense for the future. This devious, merciless government and fossil fuel corporation partnership that is pushing more fossil fuel extraction and more fossil fuel combustion, overriding the long established fact and of, of the future impacts and the urgent mitigation, rejecting all normative values of the most basic ethics and morality, acts like a fossil fuel fascist conspiracy. It perfectly fits Mussolini's definition. But I'm going to finish with another IPCC sixth assessment statement. Climate change is a threat to human well-being and planetary health. High, very high confidence, that means all the scientists agree. There is a rapidly closing window of opportunity to secure a livable and sustainable future for all. The choices and actions implemented in this decade will have impacts now and for thousands of years. That's the IPCC from their headline statements. Therefore, the real and greatest ever criminals are the fossil fuel corporations and the fossil fuel pushing governments who deny the right of the world's children today and all future generations to a livable climate, who promote the continued business as usual, fossil fuel omnicidal economy, the economy of constant monetary growth with the destructive decline of life on Earth. The economy that's causing increasingly hellish heat waves, wildfires, droughts, powerful storms and floods leading inevitably to an unlivable future. This is the crime of all time. <laughs>